This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN. Technology, news, and information. All in one place. This is the E911 Talk Podcast, episode 98, for Monday, August 13th, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. This past week on August 7th, a 911 call from the Chevron Refinery in Richmond, California, made the news when the audio tape, first obtained by the San Jose Mercury News, depicted a female police dispatcher stating, I don't know what that means, but okay. At least that was the context of the story that was titled, quote, Dispatcher seems confused by 911 call reporting Chevron Richmond fire, unquote. Now, this particular story grabbed my interest mainly because of the implication of an MLTS PBX being involved, as well as the procedures in place at a particular place of business. Now, normally I don't play Monday morning quarterback on news stories. That's a potentially dangerous stance to take in any situation, and I personally feel it's especially true for stories relating to public safety. If for nothing else, it's completely unfair to sit and digest the situation, taking hours upon hours to think about it, when in most cases, the public safety official gets a split second at best to make that same decision. So let's start off by analyzing the call, as was published by the San Jose Mercury News. Hey, Chevron. Hello, we have a fire in a process unit for crude. I don't know what that means, but okay. Right, we got a process unit coming to gate 31. It'll be a first, first level response for you guys. Okay, what does that mean? How many do you need? It's what, what you guys got, like... Like a single alarm? Like a good structure fire? Um, whatever your structure is for us, I think it's like three inches in a truck. Okay, Please. all right. Thanks, Thank bye. Okay, so let's pull this apart piece by piece, as I think you'll find some interesting parts to this that were not really brought out in the news stories. Hey, Chevron. So this tells me a couple of things. First of all, it appears that the dispatcher answered pretty casually with, Hey, Chevron. This would probably indicate that they had some type of Annie Alley pop on their screen, as they knew who it was, and it seems that it appeared casual in nature, probably because calls from that facility were not uncommon. After all, it's a large manufacturing facility that is well known. Hello, we have a fire in a process unit for crude. The caller from Chevron calmly stated the problem, a fire, and the location, crude unit number four. Unfortunately, this meant nothing whatsoever to the 911 call taker. This is the first incident where the press stated that the dispatcher seems confused. Well, last time I checked, 911 call takers are paid to answer 911 calls. If you actually expect them to decipher what crude unit number four means from a location perspective, then I think you need a bit of a reality check. This is exactly what I was talking about in my podcast last month, where I stated that cube 2C231 means just about as much as I'm wearing blue socks to the 911 call taker. It's extraneous information that they really can't use. With thousands of businesses in the community and nothing more than a 10-digit phone number and street address on their screen, do we actually expect the 911 call takers to get out their crystal balls and start guessing at this stuff? I don't think so. And this is why enterprise businesses need to wrap process around their E911 policies. You can forget about location discovery. You can forget about on-site notification. You can forget about pager alerts to internal first responders. If you don't have a process in place and well-defined, and most importantly, understandable emergency response locations and descriptors, you can expect the same exact response that the dispatcher gave to Chevron. Okay, what does that mean? How many do you need? Now, while some choose to chastise this dispatcher and label him as confused, actually, I commend them. They stayed calm, they got the information they needed, and disposed of the call in less than 24 seconds. Now, in my book, that's pretty damn good. If you ever thought that location discovery within an enterprise or commercial facility was critical, I asked you to think about how poorly this could have gone if it hadn't been for the calm professionalism of the 911 center. This is an excellent lesson as it teaches us that not only is technology needed to correct the problem of appropriate reporting from MLTS systems, but the vetting of procedures and zone naming conventions with public safety so that both sides are speaking the same language and can communicate effectively. Fortunately, there were only a few minor injuries at this particular incident, but remember, it hasn't always been that way. Thanks for listening to the E911 Talk podcast. 
If you're going to the APCO International 78th Annual Conference and Expo in Minneapolis, Minnesota, August 19th through 22nd, be sure to stop by the Avaya booth and say hi. We'll be recording our 100th podcast live from the show. For more information, you can check it out on the web at apco2012.org or follow me on Twitter at Fletch911. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency? This is the Avaya Podcast Network, APN.